All right, so we uh, going to show you how to care for your tuna after you catch it. We caught it, we spiked it, we bled it, let it sit under a wet towel for a while, cool down a bit before it goes in the ice. Now Jimmy's getting ready to uh, take the guts out. Try to get the guts out. So you just want to go in. A lot of guys will do a diamond cut right here. I just go in the anal vent right here and make a little slit. That's probably plenty. Get your finger in there. And then you can feel where everything's connected right there and you just pop that off, okay? So now there's nothing connecting the guts, the guts from his butt, all right. all right? Lift up the gill raker and there's a, a, some white, where the white's connected right here, you wanna cut through that right there. And that, what that does is, that opens it up enough where you can get your hands in here and work. A lot of guys will make a cut right here and take the whole gill plate off. Right. But so I just go in there, make that cut right there to get that off. So this is the same thing on both sides. Then you just get your hand in there and go around and separate the gill raker from all this meat right here. Get in there, cut all this back. So it's nothing's here is connected. All right, all the way up to the front. Hopefully I won't chop my freaking hand off. You gotta get it all the way up here. So that when you go to pull it, that's all free. So that's this side's done right here. Now you gotta flip it over. No country for old men, huh? Work, yeah. 62 year old tech hand. I'm only 61. Same thing. Lift up that gill. Get, fuck, I can't. I'm, not, I'm in a funky spot for me. Lift up that gill. Get in there. Cut that loose. Free that open. Don't let me stab you. Get back in there. This is not my you best. You can see it better on the first one there. Not my best angle. It's just nothing like working on a 24 foot skiff. At least it's not rough. Separate all this stuff right here from there, just like the last time. Let me make sure I got this stuff up here. Damn you. Damn you. You monster. There we go. See how I open that up? Yep. That's where you make that cut. So that, that, that frees this stuff up. You want to make sure you get in here. So you're cutting the, all the membrane that's holding the gills. Yep, everything that's holding the, the gills and everything together. You want to get back in here, make that cut so that the gills aren't connected to anything. Almost had that one done. Okay. Pretty close here. You can check this out. Nah, it doesn't look too bad. Few tendons and stuff in there. Yeah. So now you basically freed the gills and the and the guts. Yeah. Out. Then if you're lucky, you can just get in here and give this a little twist. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it in one fell swoop. I mean, I've seen guys that can do this in a minute, but they're not me. Am I still connected here? Yeah. There we go. Get that off. That's part of that stuff on the white side. Okay. Get in here and grab this stuff and pull it out. Oh, shit. I must have cut too much. Oh, come to Papa. It doesn't all have to come out in one piece either. You can get out no, of it if you can. No, sometimes it does for me, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, not okay, this time. Gills are out. Gills are out. Now, you roll your, all your shirt sleeves up because it's going to get nasty. 
That's why. So you got to cut that. You got to make sure you cut that right there. That out. Then you get your hand in there. Jesus Christ. Of course, it's the hardest one I've done in fucking a while because you're videoing it. <laughs> That's the way it always is. Well, we're not experts. I didn't say. We were. All right, I'm getting down. Then you can get in here. What is going on here? And all of this eventually. I thought I had that shit all cut out. I guess I missed a little bit of it. You'll know when you do, because you can reach your hand in there and go, holy shit, this thing's still hot. And then you can pull all of its guts out. Does I get it all? to be too clean on this one. There we are. Usually, it all pulls out like that. There you go. So now get all the guts out, the gills out. So now you can just wanted to stick your hand in there. You could, but if you look down in there, it's empty all the way back. Right. So. And now we're gonna put it in the ice. You got ice and rock salt. And rock salt. Yeah. And salt water. Yeah, just a little bit of salt water today because I didn't have a lot of ice. And that will get the ice colder than... Way cold. Way colder than it would be otherwise. You can throw a water it bottle in there. It freezes water bottles. And it'll freeze solid. I would pump its stomach there and show you guys what's in there, but it's just a little teeny pinhead anchovies. So there's that. As you rinse it out before putting it in the ice. Yeah, salt water doesn't kill it. You don't want to do this with a freshwater hose. Ever. See, if you make your cuts better all the way down through here and on this top piece here, once you go in, that's what was catching me it was right here. Right, right. It was still hooked together, so. And you want to make sure and let the tuna cool down a bit before you put in your eyes. You're just going to burn all your eyes up. Yeah. Now he's going into the cut he made in the back to blow water out the front, get all the intestines and everything uh, blood and that out of there. Got the fish nice and clean. It really pays off for taking the time to do this. You end up with a much better product. Well, yeah, the fish, the inside of the fish is already way cooler. Everything's already out. There's a little piece. Right. Going with your hands and clean it up. You just kick us in gear just to kick all this shit out of here. So the uh, we, we had 40 pounds of ice, two 20 pound bags. He threw that into the thing. Probably a cup full of rock salt. You got like yeah, Home Depot or whatever. A little bit more than that. A couple, a couple cups. cups of rock salt. Yeah. All right. Now this fish is ready to go into the. Yeah, I like I like to grab all this goo if I can right now. You don't have to deal with it at home. And you don't have to deal with it at home. You know, just whatever you see. And if your fish is too big to put in your bag or kill box, you can cut the head off without doing any damage to it to make extra room. Yeah. That looks pretty good. There you go. All right. Why don't we take it up there and show them how, uh, what you got your eyes set up and everything. Yeah, I hope this one fits in there. This one's large. This one's on size large. All right, we don't have a kill bag because he's got a little deck hatch here. Let me move snick hunters. Step away here. So there's a little blood in here. So he's got the ice, he's got some salt water, 
and he's got about two cups of rock salt in there. You can see the salt. Like a, I just, we just made this up just when we caught the fish. You can see the it's rock salt It's already starting right to there. freeze. It's kind of like an RSW. We smash after two hours, we'll come out ice cold throughout. Usually I make this up at the dock, on our way out. But we haven't been uh, catching. So yeah, we're, been, this is a bass trip. We just happened to do this. So we got two bags instead of three. So let's see if you're going to fit. <laughs> the turnover. And it doesn't fit. And it's a hair too big. Anyway, this fish doesn't fit in the holes, but you get the picture. So this one's close to 100. We're going to have to probably pull it out of here and uh, cut the head off or something. Pull it and, out, uh, chop off the head or the tail, one of the two, and then throw it back in. Yeah, so, so that's how you do it. You just close it up or put it in your kill bag, and by the time you get back to the dock, you will have ice-cold fish. Yeah. There you go. Completely. Fish processing. So it's a few hours later here, three hours, two and a half hours later. Jeez. The uh, water balls we threw in with the... Uh, into the uh, that ice mix due to the rock salt they're almost frozen solid they probably were before we let some of the water out but this fish i mean it just came out of the uh slurry here and i mean this was in the water what three and a half hours ago yeah and it's already completely chilled ready to cut as soon as jimmy gets the loin off here i'll show you the quality of the meat you know if you don't get these fish cooled down enough when you cut them they get real loose so, that getting them chilled down with that uh, ice slurry mixture really makes a huge difference. Huge difference. So, he's just, uh, I mean, you guys know how to play a tune anywhere. If you don't, it's probably a better video from Tommy Cohen. Probably a better video like on there than me. Yeah. I'm just waiting for him to roll his loin over here and take a look at how, uh, how that meat looks after a short time. If you get one of the real big fish, you might want to leave it overnight in that yeah. mixture because it'll chill even further. 200 pound fish you probably leave in there 12 hours. But this this fish here, which is probably between, I don't know, 80 and 100 pounds somewhere, is uh, already completely chilled down. Uh, grandpa's tired. Grandpa's getting tired? Grandpa's tired. God damn it. There's Jimmy's dog. Get out uh, here. Masubi, waiting for scraps. Oh yeah, for sure. They all are. Are they? Anyway, let's have a look here in a sec. I don't work at the fish processing plant. You don't. You don't need to. One of the not fun things about tuna fishing right here is dealing with the stuff when you get home. I mean, that is a good-looking, properly chilled piece of tuna meat right there. And uh, meat's nice and clean. All you got to do is get Should it chilled be. down. Got some snacks for the dog. Everybody's uh, happy. There you go. Tuna fishing, tuna processing, and dealing with it on your boat. Ice cold. Flap right, coming off that after two and a half, three hours.